Okay. All right, welcome everybody to Skills for Life 6. And I'm excited to have Patrick Lawrence from the Challenge Athletes Foundation talking to us about their Challenge Athletes Foundation grant process. So welcome, Patrick. Thanks so much for joining us. Of course. Thanks, Sean. Happy to uh, to be with you and uh, be presenting this information for the Skills for Life conference. Uh, I've got a lot of great stuff to share with you and uh, would uh, welcome any any questions that might come along. Uh, I'm sure Sean can share an email out. Uh, at the conference or, or with an attachment to this video once this is distributed. So we'd love to hear from you and, and any questions that you may have. Um, I can tell you a little bit about myself. I started at CAF almost seven years ago now. Uh, my background is uh, kind of varied. I started out with an associate degree in occupational therapy. So I worked as an OT assistant for about five years in adult mental health and then another five in uh, long-term care and a little bit of acute care sprinkled in. Uh, so I had a strong healthcare background to begin with. Uh, I went back to school, got a degree in recreation management and worked in parks and rec for a while. And then I uh, went back one more time uh, to, to go to school for sports medicine. I got a master's in athletic training, which has brought uh, what brought me to Paralympic sport because I started working with um, a United States uh, sitting volleyball program, uh, which is a largely an amputee sport. But that was my first introduction uh, throughout all the other work that I've ever done in um, adaptive sport. And so um, not long after that, I landed at Challenge Athletes Foundation and started working in the grants program. I've also helped with the development of our high school and youth adaptive sport program. And then most recently in community outreach, which gives me opportunities to do things like this. So I'm very excited to share some information with you. So uh, we're good to go, Sean. I'll get rolling with the uh, presentation. So Challenge Athletes Foundation, uh, this is a, a great starting off slide. We just took this a few weeks ago where this is uh, a young man who's a uh, um, upper limb difference. Uh, he was born uh, non-disabled and lost all of his limbs, but there was a really cool opportunity to do uh, an activation with the New York Yankees. So this is him hitting off the tee in Yankee Stadium, which is a kind of a, a cool thing for him. And he's a baseball kid through and through, and he really enjoyed that. So if we go to talk about what CAF is, uh, CAF started in 1994, essentially, uh, when a group of uh, San Diego-based triathletes got together to help raise money for one of their own who had been injured. The photo that you're looking at is a gentleman named Jim McLaren, he was a high, I'm sorry, he's a collegiate football player uh, who, after college, uh, dabbled in acting a bit. He uh, really got into triathlon, and uh, through the course of one of his uh, training exercises, uh, was involved in a uh, in an accident and became an APT. Um, he then went on to compete in the Kona Triathlon, which is one of the most grueling races in the world, and uh, on very um, limited prosthetics because the technology then wasn't nearly what it what it is today. Uh, but he finished Kona and had a, an outstanding time. Uh, after a while, he, he continued to to race and continued to to work. And unfortunately, was on a triathlon course and uh, was hit by a bus and was uh, immediately became quadriplegic. And so, the um, in 1994, the group of of people in triathlon in the San Diego community really rallied behind him to put on a triathlon to get him an accessible van so he could be more independent. What they took away from that, in addition to raising double the money they set out to raise and, and get a, a van for Jim, was that they had a, a group of people there at this race who uh, also had disabilities. And, and they really talked with the founders of CAF, these folks that were in the triathlon community, about the, the barriers that exist in trying to have an active lifestyle when one has a disability, uh, that the insurance companies won't fund prosthetics, they won't fund racing wheelchairs or adaptive hand cycles or the kind of equipment that helps people with disabilities really live an active lifestyle. And so from this uh, Challenge Athletes Foundation really was born of the need to have uh, these sorts of resources. And uh, so they established a charitable foundation and from, uh, we like to say from 1K many, from, so from Jim's initial gift, um, CAF has, has blossomed into um, an organization that gives 
thousands of grants every year. Um, over the years, we've we've given um, gosh grants in every every state of the union. Every uh, I think we're up to seventy countries now, and so our, our outreach really is national and international. So we're here to talk really about our annual grant program today. Uh, the annual grant program is is one that is every year in the fall. Uh, we always open the first week, generally the first day of September. The application stays open for two months from September 1st through November 4th. It is an online application program, and the, the platform that we use is called Zengen. And so what happens is um, throughout the course of the, uh, the fall, we take in these applications, we shut everything down November 4th, and then we review the applications through the winter and then after the winter months, when everything gets reviewed and revised and we've gone through all the reports, we announce awards in March. And the reason for this is because this all kind of ties in with our fiscal year. So we know how much money we've raised through the course of the year. And that really advises what our grant budget is. So uh, it's a bit of a long process, but it's something that we, we take very seriously and we're very thorough about the, uh, the execution of this. And so um, it's a it's something that that takes a bit of time, but we are happy to walk through the steps with you as you go through the application process. Within this annual grant program, the first thing you would do is when you go to our website, uh, there will be a link there where you can apply. I think there's just a big orange button that says apply now. You can actually start that process now. The first step in the process is to create a profile within our Zengen system. And the first thing that that does is ask you several questions and it's just basic information that we collect on everybody. But the vital piece of that is your medical verification of disability. So what we're looking for there is some sort of physician's note. Uh, it can be a letter from a doctor, a nurse, a nurse practitioner, a physical therapist, occupational therapist, it can be from a prosthetist just verifying that you have a permanent physical disability. And this is just the first hurdle to clear to verify that you are eligible for support through Challenge Athletes Foundation. We actually have created a form that you can download from the application and take to your physician to have them fill that out or your medical professional. You can also, if you have older documents that are in your home that state your disability or that state a diagnosis that relates to your disability, that form can be uploaded as well. So we're all just talking to get a little thirsty. So the next thing that we need from you, once you've gone through your profile, is you'll actually get into the application process itself. So within that, there's more questions. As I said, everything's online. So most of it is things that we will either be typed in or there's drop down menus and you select based upon the questions that are there. The required things that we need from you, though, are a letter of recommendation. And this should come from a coach or a mentor or a teammate or someone who can speak to your interest and your uh, pursuit of an active lifestyle, whether it's in a specific sport or whether it's just uh, some funding that you're looking for in another area just to be active. We want a little bit of a background on you from someone other than you. And hopefully it's someone that's been kind of along this journey with you to help us better understand how we can help you as an organization to reach your athletic goals. The next thing we need is financial documentation. So this can be a W-2 form from the previous year. It can be uh, the first one or two pages, I believe, of your 1040 form that just shows your annual income. For those who uh, receive Social Security or Social Security Disability Income, we'll accept an award letter that shows the annual amount that comes in. The reason for this is because we really want to take and distribute the funds to the people who are most in need. So this financial documentation, although it seems a little intrusive to some, it only serves that purpose because as we go through and report out everybody who's applied for the grant every year, we want to elevate those to the top of the list that are most in financial need. So that's just kind of a, a variable that we take into consideration to help get need to those who need it most. The other thing that we need from you is a couple of photos. We'd love to see if you are active, uh, the things that you're doing in, in adaptive sport or, or just in physical activity, if those aren't available, then any other photos of you will suffice. So what can you apply for? There's several different 
kind of ways and uh, opportunities for you to apply for grants on an annual basis. The first of which is major adaptive equipment. So in this photo, we see someone who's riding a uh, trike. So it's a, it's a recumbent trike. It's been adapted just a little bit because she has a congenital limb difference. And so she's actually steering with a modified um, setup that, that one, of, one of our mechanics created for this bike. So this trike at the very base level before any modifications is prohibitively expensive for most people. And that's, you know, that's part of the reason why we created this grant program to begin with. So this adaptive equipment that's on the first bullet really covers a lot of things that, that we see as common requests. We're very fortunate to have good working relationships with most of the top adaptive equipment makers in the United States. So Top End, Eagle Sports, um, Colors Wheelchairs, Box Wheelchairs, uh, a lot of the companies that are making really great adaptive sport equipment, we have uh, partnerships with them and they offer some discounted rates that helps us to allow and stretch our grant funds. Because we have these partnerships with them, if you go to our application form, we do have a drop down list of all the things that we offer through these companies. And so that's kind of ready made for you. So if you're looking for something that doesn't fit into that category, you could be looking for something that would be tabbed funding toward equipment. And so that, that's what you would choose if you came to us with a request that was a little bit outside of what we normally advise or normally offer through our adaptive equipment partners, but could be a major expense that you could need some assistance with. So in a case like this, it could be uh, any sort of bigger, um, bigger ticket item that we would just have you upload a quote for. So we've had things like regular bicycles. We've had uh, prosthetics that don't necessarily um, go through our OSER prosthetics program, which we'll talk about uh, just in, in a few moments. Uh, but these are things where we want to have an idea of what it is that you're asking for. And that quote helps to help helps us to understand what it is and what the expense is that goes with that. The largest uh, and the most granted category really is sports expensive, it's expenses. And this is kind of a grab bag. Uh, we used to have a, a separate grant opportunities for coaching and training or travel and competition. And a few years ago, we decided to just kind of combine those all together. And this was kind of a byproduct of, of COVID and a pandemic time where people weren't necessarily able to spend the money on the things they had intended to spend them for um, when they're, uh, you know, when the pandemic came around. So we really have provided more uh, flexibility in this. So a sports expense grant could cover anything from personal training. It could be gym memberships. It could be uh, smaller equipment purchases. So if you needed, um, you know, just uh, fitness equipment, something that's a little bit less than the bigger ticket items, like we talked about in the previous two bullets. Uh, it could be for competition travel. So if you're someone who competes or if you wanted to go to a, a specific sport camp, we could help with competition or for um, travel expenses to get you there to participate in that. So that's uh, a pretty wide variety of things. And for that, we would ask you to give us kind of a list of the things that you intended to purchase and uh, kind of just an estimate of what those costs are to help justify uh, the expense that you would be asking for in the grant request. And then uh, our final category is OSER athletic prosthetics. These are for lower limb prostheses only. Uh, and I'm going to just kind of move past that right now because I've got another slide coming up that talks about that with a little bit more detail. And then one other thing that's really important for everyone to understand is that the equipment and the prosthetic grant eligibility because of the cost associated with those the eligibility for those is every three years if you're over the age of 18, and then it's every two years if you're under the age of 18, just to help accommodate growth for those that are, are still youth. Now, the other thing that's really key is that if you do apply for equipment or, or prostheses and you receive those, you can still apply for sports expenses in the subsequent years. So if you received uh, a large piece of adaptive equipment and you needed just a little bit of funds to help maintain it, or you wanted to take that piece of equipment and, and go compete on it, you could do that. So there's, there's grant opportunities available to people every year. It's just a matter of which category you kind of fall into. So as I mentioned before, 
Once the grants have been reviewed through the winter, we announce our awards in March of every year. Usually about mid-March is what we shoot for. And then the recipient is notified by email. Uh, they, you would then, after receiving an award, you'd go back into our system. You would accept the grant. You'd complete a grant agreement form. Again, this is all online. And then you'd get a response from us about the next steps. So in the case of ordering uh, adaptive support equipment, we'd put you in touch with the vendor that could help you to get measured and then order that piece of equipment. Similar for prosthetics would be the same thing. If we sent funding to, to you to purchase equipment or you received um, a sports expense grant to spend on just various items, then you would go ahead and purchase the things that you needed and keep those receipts because those receipts have to be uploaded into the grant portal by January 31st of that following year. So to keep in line, because the timeline can be confusing, if one were to apply in September for a grant, that would be September 2022, you would receive the grant award notification in March 2023, and then the receipts would be due by January 31st of 2024. So it's a bit of a long process, uh, and our, our grants team uh, literally does not have a downtime <laughs> throughout the course of the year. Even though our grant program is annual, there's always an aspect of it that's going on. So we, we have a team of people dedicated to customer service on that end, uh, and, and they all stay very busy. So uh, hopefully that that's clear. And, and if there's questions that we can certainly address those kind of down the road. So let's talk a little bit more about the athletic prosthetic program. Uh, we've been very fortunate over the years to have a, a great relationship with OSER. Uh, OSER is our global partner for prosthetics and orthotics. And so all of the prosthetics that we provide through our grant programs do come from OSER. Every now and then we do get a request uh, that can't be fulfilled by OSER because not everybody needs a running prosthetic. And so and when that comes along, we do our best to accommodate those. And we just have to work in collaboration with OSER on those because of the exclusivity of those um, feet and knees that we're able to offer. We do, through the OSER grant program, offer high activity prosthetic feet and knees. They're specifically for running, sprinting, and jumping. Uh, the OSER um, line is pretty varied in terms of the kind of the different kinds of things that they offer. Uh, everything from a, uh, there's the, the um, young man in the photo has what are called flex runs, and that's, um, that's a pretty basic athletic prosthetic. It's good for a lot of different activities. Uh, if, if you got into more high level running and sprinting, you might get a different, uh, a different option, but uh, the good thing is that they're they're very accommodating in terms of providing the things that are best uh, for the for the applicant for the patient. An important aspect of this particular grant program is that we do bring the prosthetist in to help advise. Uh, we want to know from them, and uh, uh, part of the application process is is us sending an email to them to ask: A, is your patient appropriate for um, running jumping type prosthetics? And then the next thing is, will they assist in the creation of new sockets and the fitting? So we really try to stay closely in touch with the prosthetists throughout that process to make sure that uh, everything is, is um, above board as possible and that you're receiving the best care and the best partnership between um, Challenge Athletes Foundation, OSER, and your prosthetists to get the right kinds of things. Uh, the, the cool thing with the athletic or with the um, the athletic prosthetic program now is that it's a year round program where in the past it had been an annual program like the others, but we really would like to be more nimble and uh, be more responsive in getting athletic prosthetics to people who need them. So we about a year and a half, two years ago, moved that to a year round program and the application uh, form for that is also online. It's almost identical to the annual grant program with just a few differences, but that is always accessible on our website at challengedathletes.org. Another program to make you aware of is our Operation Rebound program. The Operation Rebound program was started by Nico Marcalonga, who is a Marine who's been at CAF for, I think, 14 years now. Um, Nico started this program uh, actually while he was still enlisted kind of created a job for himself before he ever needed a job, he likes to say, and he is the uh, the military wing of CAF. So 
NICO's program is specific to honorably discharged US military veterans, police, fire, and paramedics. So anyone who's on a police force, fire squad, or is a paramedic uh, would be eligible for support. The application process, process is very similar to the annual grant program. The same things are required. The additional thing that is required is proof of service if you're in the military or you were a first responder. The unique thing about this program is that it is very specific to this, to this group of people and it is an, annual, or it's an ongoing program. So it doesn't have the same barriers that our annual grant program has where it's once a year. Uh, once you're in, you're in for the duration and you only have to apply once. Uh, the Operation Rebound program also has a little bit special because of the relationship that Nico has with uh, the vets and the first responders that he works with. He's, um, he's very responsive. Uh, once you're in the system, it's usually a phone call to get additional support. So he's, he can be a little quicker with offering support than we can do in our annual grant program. Um, he's pretty much self-funded and uh, is just an amazing guy. So if you are a, uh, a military veteran or first responder, uh, you're eligible for this program primarily. You wouldn't necessarily need to go through the annual grant program. Uh, and so that's a that's a really good benefit uh, that exists through CAF uh, for those who have who've served on the front lines. And this last slide just talks about some of the other support that we offer. Uh, I won't get too deep into detail on these things, but maybe just a brief description about each. And then if you'd like to learn more, you can visit our website at challengedathletes.org to look into these a bit more, or I'm happy to answer any questions if you'd like to send an email over uh, once you've had an opportunity to, to view this and kind of take it in. For those of you who might live in the state of Idaho, we have a kind of a unique program that's specific to members or to uh, residents of that state. Uh, we, we had a, um, uh, a very generous partner reach out to us a few years ago uh, with some funding and an interest in really developing more adaptive sport um, cohesiveness in the state of Idaho. And so we started an Idaho branch there. Uh, it's in its fourth year now, and uh, it's doing, they're doing some amazing things. They're, they'll be opening up a, um, a multi-sport facility in the next two years that's under construction now. And uh, if you're familiar with Idaho, you know that it's uh, just a destination spot for outdoors. So there's a very outdoor recreation vibe about our Idaho chapter. With their grant program, uh, it is also a year-round program. If you are a resident of Idaho, you can apply at any time. So um, the only difference there is that you do have to provide some um, verification of your residency in Idaho. So I think it's generally a a utility bill or something that indicates that you that you live there in the state full time, but you can apply for the same kinds of things that you can through the the annual grant program. So adaptive equipment, sports expensive, prosthetics, things like that, all the same. Uh, but the process again, because it's year round, moves a little bit faster than our annual program. We also do a lot through community outreach. Uh, we we're able to connect people with mentors with uh, just people within the community. We try to be an information hub and a, and a connector. So if we don't have the answers and we don't necessarily um, have a, a certain program, we'll try to help you to find that. So our community outreach is, is pretty vast and everyone really has a hand in it. That's my primary department. Uh, so I'm always trying to connect with new people, uh, new programs and organizations to let them know what it is that we do and how we can help. Uh, but I also try to be as, as knowledgeable about the world of adaptive sport as possible and share that information out so that people can get the, uh, the help and the resources that they need. Throughout the course of the year, we do approximately 40 camps and clinics. Uh, a lot of those are in San Diego because that's where our home base is, but we're kind of expanding that. We do a lot in the state of Idaho now because we have the office there. Uh, we recently hired a couple of uh, program managers, one in San Francisco and one in kind of New York, New Jersey and Philadelphia region. Uh, so we're creating more and more programs in those areas. The camps and clinics that we run, uh, they vary from our OSER running and mobility clinics. And you've seen some photos from those throughout this presentation. Uh, those we do probably seven or eight of those in various spots in the country every year. 
We do offer adaptive swim clinics like the photo that you see. That's from our San Diego Triathlon Challenge a couple of years ago. And uh, we're happy to be providing that opportunity at the Skills for Life Conference with our coaches, Alan uh, Voissard and Allison Terry, who you see assisting in that photo. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that a lot of you will have attended that or, or will be attending that. We also have an, a, a youth adaptive sport program, and that's for uh, any of those younger individuals who want to get started in adaptive sports. Right now, it's very much tailored toward track and field because that's more of a uh, popular sport option for a lot of people um, just across the country who, who do have youth with uh, disability to participate. But through the course of developing this program, we, we created a lot of videos in both track and field and wheelchair basketball. Uh, so those are online as, a, as an online resource. We also have a cycling club, uh, which is open to any person with a disability, any type of rider. So whether it's an upright bike, a hand cycle, a trike, uh, the, there's a cycling club that um, has hubs in some of the cities where we have offices, but it also has a virtual component. Um, there are group rides on Zwift and I believe Strava that are accessible. Uh, if someone um, gets a membership to the cycling club, I believe it comes with very uh, nicely appointed CAF cycling jersey. So if cycling is of interest to you, that may be something to look into. And then finally, we have an empowerment through sports school program. And this is really kind of an outreach program that was developed a couple of years ago to try to get CAF speakers into schools to talk more about disability awareness, about ability awareness, about adaptive sports and uh, the opportunities that exist within this adaptive sport community. So there's more about that on our website as well, but that's a great resource if you or anyone in your family is interested in helping the people in your community learn more about both CAF and or adaptive sport and inclusiveness and abilities awareness that exist as well. And I believe that's my last slide. Thank you so much for presenting on all of that information. It was incredibly helpful. Um, I learned a ton of stuff that I didn't know. So just even just those five or six slides it was extremely um, uh, helpful to learn more about everything that you offer. So thanks again, Patrick. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you for the opportunity to to speak to the attendees of the conference, Sean. Um, hopefully the uh, conference will be a big success or by the time they view it, will have been a big success. And uh, please do uh, reach out to me. I'm sure Sean can share my information. Um, happy to help and provide any, any additional um, notes as needed. And hopefully we'll see some of you applying for a grant this fall and following your, your sport journey. So thank you again. It's been a pleasure to, to join you today. Yeah, Patrick.